Magnavox Odyssey was released in 1972, making it the world's first home video game console. So when it comes to going back to the past, you can't go back much more than this. Look at this thing. Looks like a spaceship. What's the top for? The controllers are even stranger. You get a reset button and two knobs on the sides. One to move vertical and one to move horizontal. And then one more to do God knows what. But tell me, how are you supposed to hold these things? Or do you just put them on a table? The wires are bulky and not flexible at all. They're short too. If you're sitting on your couch, the wires don't reach. Alright, I guess you're supposed to play with it on your lap, or on the floor. Alright, now we're ready to play some Odyssey. Oh, of course, I forgot one thing. We need a game. These are the games. Pretty elaborate, right? The titles are the best part. Like, what are some of the games you grew up with? Maybe Wrecking Crew on the NES, or Afterburner on the Sega Master System, or how about Game Number One on the Odyssey? There's no power button. When you put the game in, the console starts up. Pretty efficient, I guess. But half the time, it doesn't work. And after that, what do you get? Just a dot or a dash? Yeah, check out all the stuff that comes with the system. You have chips, cards, dice, a scoreboard, and most important, the overlays. This is the substitute for graphics. They come in two different sizes, depending which kind of screen you have. The games themselves are all the same thing, just two dots on the screen but they're all programmed slightly different. The instruction manual is absolutely imperative because without it, you wouldn't know the right combination, which game and which overlay. Let's try some tennis. You just gotta make all your own sound effects. You can cheat too. If you turn this little knob here, you can steer the ball. When in a tennis game would the ball ever fly around somebody? It's surreal because you can move wherever you want. It's not like you have to stay on your side of the net. So the players have to keep their own rules and their own score. That's right, the game doesn't even keep score. Now let's try the skiing game. All you do is move the light through the slopes. And with these controllers, it's harder than it looks. The only goal is to stay in the lines and see how fast you can get to the end. It's up to the other player to keep time. Now we have Simon Says. You just do what the card says and see who gets there first. Simon Says go the wrist. Simon Says go to the pet's ear. It's time for football. There's a board, a football marker, and pages of instructions to explain it all. You gotta do all kinds of math, calculate the wheel. Hockey. This one's more fun. You just try to drive the puck into the opponent's net. If you keep tapping the reset button, you can change direction. Anything goes in this game. Gotta keep it away from the net. Keep it away from the... Uh! This one's called Anal Logic. Yeah, that sounds fun. It's supposed to take place in outer space. You each start on your own planet. The idea is to get to the other player's planet by following a pattern of numbers. You figure out the patterns by adding the numbers of the last player's move. It might sound like a complete waste of time, but that's because it is. Cat and mouse. In this game, one player is the cat and the other player is the mouse. The cat tries to catch the mouse and the mouse tries to get to the hole. The blue squares are supposed to be furniture so you have to go around. But there's nothing preventing you from passing through, so naturally both players are going to end up cheating. Besides, why can't the furniture look like furniture and the hole look like a hole? Instead, they're visual representations of what they may have looked like if this game had graphics. But it's an overlay! Next is Haunted House, the first horror game. You're a detective going around picking up clues. The second player draws the cards telling you what clue to get. Also, the second player's hiding as the ghost. Oh, there you are! No matter how many times I've read the instructions, I just don't get it. Submarine. Player 2 has to follow a squiggly line and dodge torpedoes fired by player 1. But the torpedo never seems to go in the direction that it should. States. Okay, this one's just a name that state game. If you draw a card, you move the cursor on the state. But what about the little states? How are you supposed to point at them? I guess you could just point with your finger. This doesn't need to be a video game in any way. I also love how the instructions tells you that Alaska and Hawaii aren't really down there. Last game, roulette. For this one, you get out the roulette board, you get out the chips, and you play roulette. 
The wheel is the overlay. Whoever spins the wheel just closes their eyes, moves the cursor all over the place, and then you just look where it landed. If it goes off the wheel, which it does often, you line it up to the nearest number. But most of the time it goes off the screen, so you're never sure where it landed. If you want to play roulette without blowing money on the casinos, then get yourself a roulette mat and a wheel. A wheel and a ball is all you need, not a sheet of plastic with a glowing square on your TV screen. Let's check this out. This is the Odyssey gun. But let's talk about guns. You're all familiar with the Nintendo Zapper, right? Originally it was gray, but later they changed it to orange. It's pretty clear that video game and toy manufacturers have become more sensitive. They don't want to give kids something that looks like a gun. Remember Megatron? He transformed into a gun, but later they gave that orange tip at the end, and then he didn't even change into a gun at all. So now, let's see what the Odyssey gun looks like. I mean, they could never get away with this nowadays. You could never, ever... It just, it just blows my mind that there could exist a video game console that has a gun like this.